Come, my Lord Jesus, the Saviour of souls, who has saved me from the drunkenness and error of the world. Thou hast driven away from me the oblivion of error. I have distinguished this pair of trees and this pair of kingdoms, the bitter fountain and the holy essence of God. The light I have distinguished from the darkness, life from death. Christ and the church I have distinguished from the deceit of the world. I have known my soul and this body that lies upon it, that they are enemies to each other before the creations. The body of death indeed and the soul are never in accord. That was a psalm from the Coptic Manichaean Psalms and it's seen as one of the Cathar prayers and I want to discuss the theology of the Cathars. They're a group of Christians who have gone by many names such as the Bogomils, the Albigenians. And the word Kafar means good man or good woman, which is how they refer to themselves. They had a different view to Christianity to that of the Orthodox Christian Church. And it was said by the Orthodox Christian Church, the Roman Church, that they were a heresy, a heretical society, which is why they were hunted down in the 14th century by the Inquisition. It was in that time that their main stronghold was in France, but they had been found all over Europe and in many other countries, including the Middle East. Now, they were persecuted by the Roman Church because their beliefs in God, the world creation, and Jesus Christ differed from that of the so-called Orthodox Church, as did their idea of Satan. Cathars believed in good and evil, but in a different way to everyday Christians. They also believed in the transmigration of souls in reincarnation, but only if one had a soul to move on with. I will go into this in a while. First, I'm going to take us back to the 3rd century Common Era and to a guy called Mani, who was a teacher and prophet in Persia. He taught that this world was caught up in a battle between the realms of light and the realms of darkness. Many came to listen to Mani, and Manichaeism was born. He taught that this world that we live in was once a spiritual realm of light, but that it was invaded by the realm of darkness, which made it a more material world. And the dark forces deceived and corrupted people into believing that this material world was the real world. Manny was preaching that we must see through this material world and find the divine, the light realm. The light realm had become imprisoned in the dark. Now, why does the divine realm of light not fight back and save us from the dark forces? Because we have been given free will to do, follow, believe in what we like. Even if we are being led astray by dark forces, temptation, lies, deceit, the divine cannot interfere directly only if we reach out to it. Or, as Manny says, we see through the dark deception and help to release the light from its imprisonment. What is it the dark realm is after? Our souls. The dark realm that now rules over this earth does not want to destroy the light realm's creation, humanity. It wants to take control of it and bring humanity over to its side, the dark side, the dark realm. So this is a dualistic outlook. Two forces, dark versus light, two gods, the light god and the dark god. And to Catharism, they believed that Satan was the ruler of the dark realms. Going forward to the 12th, 13th and 14th centuries when Catharism began to spread, the Cathars still followed the ideals of the Christ teachings but they saw themselves as different to the other Christians who followed the Roman Church liturgy. But they were not truly spiritual, enlightened souls, according to the Cathars. Souls, well, people could develop them, but some souls were sort of leaning towards, not the righteous, but towards the dark forces, and the Cathars recognised these as people caught up in the riches of society, who had be dazzled by the materialistic riches of the dark realms. The dark realms also implanted fake humans into this world to lead people astray, 
demons disguised as humans, and these demonic beings could tempt weak souled humans away from the divine and into the realm of Satan. To the Cathars, to escape this material world, one had to develop one's soul by reaching to the light. The Cathars had a book to guide them. It was called The Secret Book and was an explanation of the world situation and had visions of Mani and also had written down visions of the prophets such as Isaiah. This book is also known as The Questions of John because it gives an account of a Q&A session between Jesus Christ and John the Evangelist and it kind of gives a bit more of a spiritual version to the Taos. Now the Cathars did not like the dogma of the Christian Church but this did not stop them living peacefully together for many years. The Cathar priests were free to preach and it was not until a large number of people and Roman Church priests joined up with them that the Roman Church and then the Inquisition began to take notice of them. Now why were large numbers of people and priests converted to the Cathar faith? It was not by force as the Cathars believed that one had the right to choose what one believed and disbelieved so they would never force anybody to join them. The main premise of Cathar belief was that this world was imprisoned by the dark demonic forces of Satan and that this Satan deceived everybody with an alter ego named Jehovah. And he is represented in Cathar symbolism as an owl, one who sits in the darkness and watches and listens. Satan on his hidden throne, sending his demons out to do his dirty work. Now these demons are fallen angels, the divine God never created demons. Angels he did create, but those that sinned or those that rebelled against the divine were sent to earth and Satan took them in under his wing and they became the evil demons. Now humans had the possibility of salvation of returning to the divine light but if they get caught up in Satan's materialistic plan then they get stuck here. The body dies but the soul is reborn on this earth. Satan's ultimate plan is that he can devise a way to keep all human souls here on his material realm. No one would ever be allowed to return to the divine. And how does Satan do this? By making humans forget about God and forge ahead only for materialism as a lifestyle. So how does one avoid being trapped in Satan's endless reincarnation cycle? By purification. By purifying oneself of this materialistic world which the Cathar religion gave instruction in. Through the Cathar works of asceticism, which included prayer and fasting and such like, one was able to free the soul and spirit from the entrapment of the human body at death. And the Cathars believed that this is what the Christ's teaching was really about, the revelation as to how to free one's soul. This is what his parables, his uh, miracles, they were all symbolism as to how to free one's soul and this is what the Gospels are all about. Now one of the problems the Inquisition had with the Cathars when they investigated them was that their doctrines were quite alike and not heretical at all. But the Cathar people did believe that the church was evil and run by Satan and that was one of the accusations put against them. Now there's lots of books on the history of the Cathars, which you can go and find, and there's lots of shows on them as well. I just wanted to address the theological issues of these people known as the good men and the good women. I've used Hieronymus Bosch's artwork in this film because my friend Linda Harris wrote a book about Hieronymus Bosch, believing that he may well have been from a Cathar family, and a lot of his artwork seems to offer Cathar symbolism. Uh, I know many people like to say that the Cathars were wiped out in the Albigenesian Crusade and that the Inquisition slaughtered them all, but I think many escaped and probably went underground and then carried on underground up until this day. So if you wish to know more, do go and look for various books and uh, shows on them and look out for becoming a good man or a good woman yourself and save your soul.